100 days. That's all you need to take a moderate bull and turn it into a market-ready premium weight animal if you follow this exact system. Most ranchers are spending five, six, even seven months on fattening cycles, burning money on feed costs while their cattle gain weight at a snail's pace. But I've found a complete day-by-day -day system that compresses the entire fattening process into just over three months with better results than conventional methods. This isn't theory. I documented the full 100-day transformation, and the weight gain progression is honestly insane. Day 1 through 30, you're building the metabolic foundation. Days 31 through 70, you're in the rapid growth phase. Day 71 through 100, you're maximizing finish quality. Every single day has a specific feeding strategy, and if you follow this protocol exactly, you'll see measurable differences every single week. The system starts with Phase 1, Days 1 through 30. This is where 90% of ranchers completely mess up and it costs them thousands in wasted feed. See, most producers think you need to start with maximum energy rations from day one. Wrong. Dead wrong. What you're actually doing in this first phase is reprogramming the animal's digestive system to become a feed conversion machine. Think of it like training an athlete. You don't put them at max intensity on day one, you build their capacity. Here's what happens on day one. You're starting with a base ration that's 60% forage and 40% concentrate. The concentrate blend needs to be 12 to 14% crude protein, nothing higher. Why? Because if you spike protein too early, you'll cause digestive upset, bloat, and you'll actually slow down the entire process. The animal needs time to adapt. Days 1 through 7 are purely adaptation days. You're feeding at approximately 2 to 2.5% of body weight, split into two daily feedings, morning and evening. But here's the secret nobody talks about, and this is critical, so pay close attention. Between days 8 and 15, you're going to start incrementally increasing the concentrate portion by 5% every three days. This gradual shift is what triggers ruminal papillae development. Those are the tiny finger-like projections in the rumen that absorb nutrients. The more developed they are, the better your animal converts feed into muscle and fat. Without this careful transition, you're leaving hundreds of pounds of potential gain on the table. Now, have you ever wondered why some cattle seem to gain twice as fast as others on the same feed? It's not genetics alone, it's rumen health. And days 16 through 30 are where you establish that foundation. By day 30, your ration should be 40% forage, 60% concentrate. You're also introducing a mineral package that includes trace minerals like zinc, copper, selenium, and cobalt. These aren't optional extras, they're mandatory for enzyme function and hormone production that drives growth. Here's something most ranchers don't know. During this first 30 days, you should be seeing an average daily gain of 2.5 to 3 pounds per day. If you're seeing less than 2 pounds, something is wrong. Either feed quality is poor, water access is limited, or stress levels are too high. And stress is a silent profit killer. Cattle under stress produce cortisol, which directly inhibits muscle growth and fat deposition. So you need calm, consistent routines, clean water available 24-7, and minimal handling during this phase. Now we move into phase two, days 31 through 70, the rapid growth explosion. This is where the magic happens, but only if you set the foundation correctly in phase one. If you skipped steps or rushed the adaptation, you'll hit a plateau here and wonder why. But if you did it right, what you're about to see is incredible. On day 31, you're shifting the ration again. Now we're moving to 30% forage, 70% concentrate. The concentrate energy density increases. You're looking at rations with corn, barley, or milo as the base, combined with protein sources like soybean meal or distiller's grains. The target now is pushing energy intake without causing acidosis, which is a fancy word for rumen acid overload. This is a real danger in high grain feeding. Here's the trick that separates amateur operations from professional ones. You need to add a buffer to the ration. Sodium bicarbonate, at approximately 1% of total dry matter intake, stabilizes rumen pH. This keeps the microbial population healthy 
and prevents acidosis crashes that can set you back two weeks or more. I've seen ranchers lose entire groups of cattle because they ignored this one simple addition. Between days 31 and 50, you should be seeing average daily gains jump to 3.5 to 4 pounds per day. Yes, you heard that right. 4 pounds of live weight gain per day is absolutely achievable when rumen function is optimized and energy intake is maximized. But here's what almost nobody tells you, and this might be the most important thing you hear today. Feed intake isn't just about what you offer, it's about when you offer it and how you present it. Cattle are crepuscular, meaning they naturally prefer to eat during dawn and dusk. If you're feeding once a day at noon, you're fighting their biology. Feed twice daily, early morning and late afternoon. This aligns with their natural behavior, increases total intake, and improves gain efficiency by 15 to 20 percent. That's massive! Days 51 through 70 are about maintaining momentum. Your ration stays relatively stable, 25% forage, 75% concentrate. But now you're monitoring body condition closely. You're looking for rib cover, loin fill, and brisket development. These are visual indicators that marbling is happening internally. Marbling, that intramuscular fat, is what determines meat quality and your price per pound at sale. Now, here's a common mistake that costs ranchers serious money. They see good growth and think they can cut corners on feed quality. Big mistake. Inconsistent feed quality causes intake fluctuations, which mess with rumen microbial populations, which tanks your gain rates. Use consistent, high-quality ingredients. Test your forages and grains. Know the nutrient composition. Guessing is expensive. Phase 3, days 71 through 100, the finish phase. This is where you're adding the final polish that makes the difference between a good animal and a premium animal. You're not just adding weight anymore, you're adding the right kind of weight in the right places. From day 71 onward, you're at 80 to 85% concentrate, 15 to 20% forage. The forage is still critical for rumen function. Don't eliminate it completely or you'll cause digestive disasters. But the energy density is now maxed out. You're feeding for maximum fat deposition while maintaining muscle mass. Here's what separates top-tier finishers from everyone else. You're adding fat sources to the ration. This could be whole cottonseed, which provides both protein and fat, or it could be a commercial fat supplement. Dietary fat increases energy density without increasing acidosis risk like starch does. You're also fine-tuning protein levels down to 10 to 11 percent, because at this stage, the animal doesn't need growth protein, it needs energy for finishing. Between days 71 and 90, you should still be seeing 3 to 3.5 pounds per day. The last 10 days, day 91 through 100, gains might slow slightly to 2.5 to 3 pounds, but that's normal. The animal is reaching physiological maturity for the frame size. Now, let's talk total results, because this is what you really want to know. If you execute the system correctly, starting with an animal at approximately 900 to 1,000 pounds, you should finish at 1,300 to 1,400 pounds. That's 400 to 500 pounds of gain in 100 days. Average daily gain across the entire period, 4 to 5 pounds. That's double what most conventional programs achieve. But here's the critical question. What does this cost and is it profitable? Feed cost is your biggest variable. At current prices, you're looking at approximately $3.50 to $4.50 per pound of gain, depending on your region and ingredient costs. If you're selling finished cattle at $1.50 to $1.70 per pound live weight and you're adding 450 pounds, that's $675 to $765 in revenue per head minus feed costs of roughly $1,575 to $2,025. Wait, that math doesn't work, does it? Here's what I didn't mention yet. You're not just selling on live weight, you're selling on quality. Properly finished cattle with good marbling and condition score can command premium prices, often 20 to 40 cents per pound above market average. That changes everything. Plus, the faster you turn cattle, the more cycles you can run per year, the better you utilize facilities and labor. There are also critical management details that make or break this system. Water quality and availability, 
absolutely non-negotiable. Cattle consuming high-energy rations need constant access to clean, fresh water. Dehydration reduces intake and tanks performance. Pen conditions matter too. Mud and filth increase stress and disease risk. You need well-drained pens with adequate space, at least 75 to 100 square feet per animal for feedlot conditions. Health management is another piece most people underestimate. Before starting this program, cattle should be fully vaccinated, dewormed, and treated for external parasites. Sick animals don't gain efficiently, period. If you're trying to run this system with health problems in the herd, you'll fail. Also, implants and growth promotants can boost gains by an additional 10 to 15%, but that's a management decision based on your market and regulations. Here's something that might surprise you. Genetics matter, but they're not everything. I've seen commercial crossbred cattle outperform purebred stock in feedlot settings because of hybrid vigor and adaptability. Choose cattle with good frame size, healthy structure, and calm temperament. Flighty, stressed animals will never perform like calm ones. One more critical factor, feed bunk management. You should be feeding to achieve cleanup in four to six hours. If feed sits for 12 hours, it's degrading in quality and palatability drops. If it's gone in two hours, you're underfeeding and limiting gain. This requires daily observation and adjustment. It's not a set it and forget it system. So, is this system for everyone? Honestly, no. If you don't have access to quality feed ingredients at reasonable prices, if you can't commit to twice daily feeding and close monitoring, if you don't have proper facilities, then this won't work. This is a high input, high management, high output system. But if you have the resources and commitment, the results are undeniable. The beautiful thing about this 100-day system is that it's scalable. Whether you're finishing 10 head or 10,000, the principles stay the same. It's about precision, consistency, and understanding the biology of what you're doing. Let me leave you with this. Cattle production is both an art and a science. The science gives you the framework, the nutrition requirements, the growth curves, the management protocols. But the art is in the daily observation, the adjustments, the intuition you develop from working closely with your animals. This system gives you the science. Your commitment and attention give you the art. If you're serious about improving your cattle operation, about finishing animals faster with better results, about increasing profitability and efficiency, then this 100-day system is your blueprint. Don't just watch this and forget it. Implement it, adapt it to your specific situation, test it, measure your results. And here's my challenge to you. Try this system on a small group first. Document your results. Track your weights, your costs, your feed conversion. Then compare it to what you've been doing. I'm confident you'll see the difference. We're building a community here at Biggest Bulls and Cow of ranchers who are committed to excellence, to learning, to improving every single day. If that's you, hit that subscribe button right now. Drop a comment below and tell me, what's your biggest challenge in finishing cattle? What results are you currently getting? Let's learn from each other. Share this video with another rancher who needs to see this information. Together, we're raising the standard of cattle production. Let's keep growing, keep learning, and keep building better operations. I'll see you in the next one.